everyone. So today I'll be making my homemade shepherd's pie. Don't worry, you can trust me. I was a certified cook for about four years. After taking a couple months of culinary school, you do need a little more than a couple months, but I had dropped out and then years down the road, I ended up wanting to go get my certification and I passed it with flying colors. I figured out how to cook when I was roughly 13. Um, I'm, a, I'm gonna be 26 this year, so I have about 13 years under my belt due to family experiences. I had to figure out how to cook on my own. Of course, one of my biggest idols is Gordon Ramsay. Ever since I was cooking on my own, I've been watching his show. Of course, like my, my parents didn't really care about the cursing and all that. We, we found it amusing, but I would always watch him and then I would always go on YouTube and I would look up his channel and I would look up his food recipes. I'm always following this guy. So let's get started, shall we? I wanna start off with your ingredients, obviously. I have the ground beef, I have the potatoes, four mashed potatoes, and I have my onions. I speed it up a little bit today, so I do have minced garlic, but you can use regular clove garlic, and butter. So you're obviously gonna wanna take your potato, wash a little bit, and you're gonna start skinning. I used, like to use my peelers. Um, some people use knives. I think peelers are actually a lot better because it just takes off the top layer, and using a knife, like, and manually doing it is taking off a lot of potato that didn't need to be wasted. And I'm making a big dinner, so I'm gonna be doing this whole bag. So I'm actually gonna pause the video, do all that, and then get back to you. Okay, so after I was done skinning them, I had cut them and placed them in the same water that I'm gonna be boiling them in. Because potatoes take longer to boil, that is why I cut them. So if you don't wanna spend like 40, five minutes boiling an actual um, full potato, that's why you wanna cut them up. You wanna start with them first, you wanna to start to boil them because they take the longest. So that's why I started with my potatoes. So I have it on the burner. I have a gas stove. So I like to set mine when I boil all the way up. And then once it reaches that boiling point, if it gets too much, then I turn it down to about six. Um, but yeah, I just have a gas stove. I'm not really used to gas stoves. I just moved into this house. So that's why I add doing. salt into anything I boil, like spaghetti and all that. Because the salt and the spaghetti, like spaghetti, like it absorbs, right? So anything you're boiling is pretty much absorbing that water. You can put as much as you want or as little as you want. And just give it a little stir. And you're going to let that sit until it starts to boil. While the potatoes are boiling, that's a good time to do anything else you gotta do because again, it takes the longest. This is where we cook our meat, we chop up our onions, we get the vegetables going. Since the vegetables take very minimum time, it's pretty much just washing them off and sticking them on top pretty much because then you're gonna bake this at the end. So I like to start with my meat next because it's the second longest thing to cook. So that has time to cool off and whatever so we can add seasoning, whatever you gotta do. like this. Again, this is just an example of how I make a shepherd's pie. With the gas stove, since I'm gonna start with my meat first, I'm going to ignite. And then ground beef takes, it's pretty quick to cook, especially when it's unthawed. So I'm gonna put it on a little higher. I usually go between five and four. And I'm gonna let that pan heat up until I hear a sizzle when I stick um, the garlic in it. Oil my pan. I don't want to do so too much. much oil because the meat naturally extracts all the moisture and the blood and everything. So you're actually going to have to drain this after you're done. So yeah, so don't put too much oil in it. There's an oil, no when the oil is ready, I like to flick my finger in it. Like if I have a little bit of water on my finger. And then when you see that popping, your minced garlic or your garlic cloves are ready to go in. So I'm going to take a couple hefty spoonfuls only because I am making a lot of ground beef. And when you hear that, that's that's great. Um, garlic is actually very cool, especially like garlic cloves. Um, flavors are starting to be extracted from the garlic itself, which is really cool. Um, also a good antioxidants, good for your heart, all that fun stuff. I love garlic. Like I put garlic in every single meal I cook. Usually at this point, I would add some chopped onions. Um, I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna do it with the ground beef first. Uh, and then I'm going to put the onions on top. So I like to break up my meat a little bit, place it around. I do have to make a lot, so I'm going to do one and a half packets first, and then I'll make the other half second. I start to season it, so I like to add a good bit of pepper. 
especially with a lot of meat there. I'm gonna add some salt. This is actually like, it's, yeah. So it's bigger pieces of salt. It's something I picked up. I honestly know nothing about it. <laughs> I just know it was chunkier and I like it with this. I really wanna taste like salt and pepper in my meals. This, the soul food seasoning is recommended. Um, tastes amazing. You don't need a whole lot of pepper with whatever you're cooking with because this is actually kind of spicy. So I'm only gonna put a little dash in it because not everyone that's gonna be eating this is a big spice fan, pun intended. Um, garlic powder, I know I already have garlic in there, but again, like I said, I'm a real garlic freak. Again, you don't have to cook this with the same seasonings I am. I'm already gonna have onions in there, but I do actually really love onions too, so maybe I'm a freak for that too, but either way, I love to season my food. I don't understand how people just eat their food bland. Food isn't meant to be that way. I'm a big fan of parsley. I like to add parsley with almost like a lot of things I cook actually. So we're gonna spread that on top. And then we're gonna start mixing them all together. So you really wanna break up the meat. Make sure you're mixing all that seasoning into with each other. If you don't know too much about cooking when you start to see it brown, obviously, or gray, it's starting to cook. Um, so this is actually going to get really, really moist and oily as we start to cook because all the other oils and the blood and the water from the meat is starting to abstract from it. So as you notice that, um, again, I have a lot of meat here, so I'm probably going to have to drain it before I finish. But... Um, Try to finish it in the oils before you drain it. It actually keeps a lot of the flavor and the season that we had put on it. And it just tastes a lot better too. It's not as dry. And I don't like to drain all the oil out because I don't like dry meat. So while that's cooking for a little bit, the potatoes started to boil while we were doing this. So it is getting a little high. So I am going to turn it down to about six. And let that boil some more. Remember what temperature you, or what time that you had uh, started boiling it. Um, with, has, with the size that we cut the potatoes, it should probably only take like 15 minutes max. Um, but again, you can check it by sticking a fork in it. I'll show you that throughout the video. And if it's really soft, it is time to take out and blend. If it's kind of like if you have to stick your fork in it, if it's a little too hard, then you know it's time to keep boiling. Okay, so that's done. I also turned off the potatoes because um, they are ready to be mashed. Don't mind my messy sink. So I'm actually going to take the pot over. And this is how I like to drain. I saw it off of a life hack one time. And I'm going to take the strainer, stick it on top like this. It's okay if you squish the potatoes, it, they're gonna get mashed anyways. And then I actually flip the whole thing. So much easier than accidentally spilling it in the sink or burning your hands. You know, this way is much, much more effective and it's still in the same pot that they all need to be in. So I don't have to remove anything. I don't have to waste another pot. It's all right there. I'm gonna take a hot plate and put it on the counter. Move everything out of the way. And we are going to, sorry, sorry. Start the mashed potato process. I like to get everything out I need for everything I'm doing. So I got my blender, I got my milk, my butter, and you guys are going to think I'm disgusting, but you don't have to do this again. Don't follow this if you don't want to. I put buttermilk ranch also in my um, mashed potatoes. It's actually really, really good. Don't knock it till you try it. Since the mashed potatoes are still hot, I always like to start with the butter. Um, of course butter needs time to melt and it needs to be hot for it to melt so we're gonna start with a big whopping tablespoon of butter or two i'm making two dinners so i'm using a lot of butter <clears throat> a lot more than what you probably will be doing in your quantity but this is my quantity so i'm just gonna mix it up a little bit let it melt get it all nice it's starting to mush so that means they were ready to take it out And this is what I was talking about. So when you don't know if the potato is ready to boil, 
to boil. So um, you could just do this. You could just stick it right in a pot as it's boiling. But see how it's just like sinking? I'm barely putting any pressure in. And just see, it just broke apart. If that starts to happen, that means it's time to get, it's time to boil. But if you're like struggling and then it goes through, okay, yeah, the potatoes still need more time. Which is why I always cut them up. So just mix the butter around a little bit. And then the more butter you use, obviously, the less thicker it's going to be. Um, so if you put a little bit of milk, obviously it's going to be really, really thick. I like to make mine happy medium. So really, you just got to test it. I always put a little bit more milk in. So when you do the butter first, try mashing it up next and then gradually stick milk in it. mix that up I can already see it's already still too thick so I'm gonna add more milk but some people like it like this some people like it really chunky and really thick I I don't I like mine smooth so this is still too like if it's not like sort of dripping off my finger I'm not a really big fan so I'm gonna add a little more milk. And remember, it's just like splashes. Like you just kind of have to, you get used to it eventually. Like I can't tell you, like especially with not every potato is the same size. So I can't give you the exact measurement for every cup of milk you're gonna use. So it's just a guessing game, that's all. And mix that up until it's your preference. And I like mine really fluffy and creamy and I'm, I'm not a big chunky fan. Um, I know my fiance, he likes it chunky. So sometimes I'll, I'll leave a little bit of chunk in there and I'll just suck it up. So that's getting pretty good. It's getting to see it's more flingable. <laughs> um, sorry, you're going to hate me, but yes, I'm adding a little bit of ranch. And then, again, I'm going to season these because everything tastes better with seasoning. Believe me, you don't want anything bland. I think that's a lot of people's problem. Like, I think a lot of people can cook. I just think they just forget to add some of the ingredients, <laughs> you know. Uh, onion powder. Again, onion powder freak. Same thing with my garlic powder. Garlic powder freak. And salt. My chunky salt. Okay, I'm gonna blend that up again. See as we keep blending it, it's just getting smoother and smoother. Okay, and then just take a bite. Mmm. Perfect. So now we're moving on to the vegetables and all the other innards. Um, you're going to take an onion and you're going to cut it in half. Do not cut these off. A lot of people mistake that because when you cut these off, this actually makes the onion bleed. So the burning feeling, the crying can all be avoided if you just cut right here like I did with this one to show you guys. Okay, so you're going to cut it in half. It's easier to cut it in half because now we can slit it a little bit and the skin will just peel okay so we're going to peel the skin back keep that eyeball on okay that's all peeled back and now we're just going to cut right down the middle it's a little trick i saw another life hack now remember they these cuts don't have to be perfect and you know we're just shoving them right into a shepherd's pie shepherd's pies aren't perfect either Shepherd's pie actually is just a mix of a bunch of things left over from Thanksgiving <laughs> for the most part. Um, and then you're just going to cut them up. I have no specific way in cutting. So if you're trying to follow me to learn cutting skills, you are going to be very upset. <laughs> um, I, again, like I went to culinary school for a few months. I mean, but a few months isn't going to bring up a technique that works for everyone. I actually cut very dangerously, like I just tried to there. And to be honest, like, you just kind of come up with your own skill. Like, I know people say, like, do do the 
this i guess like a guide i don't know i feel like i'm gonna chop my fingernails off or something so i avoid doing that all together um so we're gonna move the onions in a separate bowl and we're going to repeat that until you have all the onions the, the amount of onions that you're looking for after cutting all the ridges which i just <laughs> i had to bring you back to this because i just started figuring out so after you cut all those ridges that you make all around you can actually slide it down. See that? Perfect. I got enough onions. I just cut enough for both um, both families. So um, I'm going to start to saute them a little bit. You don't have to saute this. Like if you like raw onions, eat them raw. Well, in your um, shepherd's pie. But I actually am going to just cook them a little bit. Just saute them just a little bit to abstract some of the, the oils and like the, the texture of it. Because I'm not big like like crispy like i don't know i don't think onions should be crispy i like sauteed onions so so we're gonna start to saute them a little bit again you don't have to follow this part if you don't want to you can actually scroll by it because i just like to just a little bit like i'm not trying to get rid of the whole onion taste but i do like my stuff sauteed i've always been that way and so just again a little bit of oil if you're if you're going to follow this just a little bit of oil in a pan wait till it sizzles Onions actually saute pretty quick and actually like even if you don't see a caramelized like onions It's it's not as bitter as a normal onion still like even just getting some of the juices out works And I'm because I'm also gonna bake this so I'm not worried about sauteing it too too much Now we're gonna actually move on to putting the shepherd's pie together. I like to use this thing I got it at Big Lots. Honestly, it's inexpensive and it's actually for cakes. Um, it's really good for shepherd's pie because it has that bottom that you can detach. And then you can slice it just like a cake because I usually do my shepherd's pies like cakes. Um, so that's up to you. I do it this way though. So you just gotta line it back up and click. Okay, so we're gonna take our mashed potatoes and I like to coat the bottom with mashed potatoes. I think it tastes a lot better that way. Um, Cause then You'll see, I actually stick it in the oven and cook the mashed potatoes. So I do put a good layer of mashed potatoes down, especially for this pot. This is going to a friend um, who ended up having hip surgery. So we're trying to have him food that lasts a, like about five days. So you're gonna spread that all along the bottom. It doesn't matter if you get some on the sides. Just spread that all around. Perfect. And we are going to stick this in the oven, actually. So, let me clean this off. Okay. This is where it gets time consuming. I set the stove for 450 because this actually, you want it to get kind of hard. You want it to get solid and it's going to hold your cake together. Okay, so just let that cook. So usually when stuff is baking, because it usually takes a little longer, so I'll let you know how long that took me. Especially like, again, it, it, dif it, different, it differs from people, the amount of milk you use, how heavy it is, how thick it is, like, you know. So I'll get back to you on how long that took me to bake to get it like all nice and crispy and stuff. And I put it at a high temperature so it browns a little bit. And then this is where I start to clean up. So um, I'll get back to you when I pull it out. I'll talk okay, to you we're going to take this out now. It's been roughly 17 minutes. Sorry, I had to flip my hand around. I just took it out. It's been roughly 17 minutes. Um, the top isn't crispy, as you can see. But if you look at the edges, you can see it's starting to brown. So if it's starting to brown there, it's most likely browning at the bottom, which is great. I like to go with the meat next. So I got my ground beef that we cooked earlier. And I'm just going to place a little bit, make sure it doesn't destroy the mashed potatoes. So just get a thin layer on it first. Okay, spread that out. There you go. 
I start adding in the rest. And then, like I said, I like to use a lot more meat because I do use a lot of potatoes, but I just don't think shepherd's pie was just made for mashed potatoes. I like meat too. Next, I like to take my onions and I like to put it right on top of the meat so that it all soaks in. You're gonna spread it evenly. There we go. Perfect. And again, so whatever preference you use to put on into your shepherd's pie, I like to use French green beans. Okay, French green beans are the stringy, stringy kind, and cut green beans are thicker and not stringy. So I like to just sprinkle them everywhere. I use roughly a whole can. Um, you don't have to. I like to because I love green beans. Um, but again, yeah, just me. I like to use a lot of green beans. So that is a whole can right there that fit a medium tray. Okay. And then I also like to put carrots. I'm, I don't like the... Again, you don't, this, this is just canned carrots and green beans. I like to mush them up a little bit though, so I don't like actual raw carrots. I like to mush them up just so like you're not like biting into the carrot, you know, and you'd be like, oh, it's just like a carrot. <laughs> I'm not a big carrot fan, but I do like soft, soft carrots. So you're going to spread that all around. I like to mush them a little bit. My hands are clean, so don't judge my style of cooking, please. <laughs> Always wash my hands after I touch everything. Okay, so that was roughly a whole can of corn. And then, after that, we're going to put the rest of the mash. We're going to put another layer of mashed potatoes on top, okay? So here we go with our mashed potatoes. Just gonna put a lump on top and this is where it gets a little tricky um the mashed potatoes start to stick to everything so just try to spread it out see how it starts to go on top but it's okay because we also put i also put a layer of cheese on top too okay so Go. Kind of like icing. Like I said, there's plenty of mashed potatoes on the bottom, so don't have to worry about not having a lot on top. I mean, some people do it backwards. Some people don't put any mashed potatoes on the bottom at all. I like to. A lot of people put the, a lot of a, uh, mashed potatoes on top. Okay, so after that, I, you can either do, I always do the four cheese mix blend or just regular mozzarella. I actually like both. So this is where I use both cheeses. I like the mozzarella on top though. So um, not that it matters. <laughs> Not that it tastes any different. I'm gonna do a nice thin little layer. Evenly throughout the whole thing. I like to think the mashed potatoes and the cheese are the things that kind of like hold it everything together like a cake. So like when I take this tray off, like hopefully it sticks, you know? And I like to put a lot of this on top. But again, it's your preference. You can add any cheeses, like any, anything else to it, really. Okay. And then... This bad boy goes right back in the oven. Take our 
tray. Let's get it right back in. Here it is. The final result. I like mine crispy. Oh, it's a little heavy. Use two hands. Ta da! And that's my shepherd's pie. I'm not gonna cut it up and open it and eat it in front of you guys only because this is going to a friend. Um, but yeah, so better view. Ta da! So, all you do, like, you can take the rack off. Um, I suggest don't while it's really hot. I suggest only take the rack off after you cool it off. So, I mean, I would just cut it up into triangles and then scoop it out if you can. It's all going in the same place. It doesn't matter if it's mushy or not. So once it's cooled off, then you can take the rack out, cut it into pieces, stick it in a microwave, reheat. This is perfect for having leftover dinners. Like if you're on a budget, like just make this, stick it in the fridge, cut it up for a few days. And it'll be good to go for you guys, all right? So I hope you enjoyed it. I also make this with deer meat. So I usually do one pound ground beef, one ground or one pound of deer meat. If you like deer meat. I, I like deer meat. I like gamey stuff. So um, me and my dad was a hunter. I grew up around that my whole life. So enjoy. Don't forget to comment below anything else you would like to see. I will be posting regularly. I have a lot of recipes to show you guys. I hope you enjoy it.